Up. Good Monday morning. Hope you had a wonderful summer weekend. We are heading into all-star break time in baseball where we evaluate what has happened with the two local teams, and it was a spectacular first half for both of them. The Yankees woke up and just slammed the Red Sox in back-to-back games to end their first half after a little bumpy ride into the weekend with the Reds and then losing to the Red Sox the first game of the series. But that was a muscle flex by them, no doubt, on Saturday and Sunday. And the Mets on that road trip won both the series. Of course, the big one against the Braves and then against the Cubs uh, over this past weekend. It was a little bit annoying yesterday, but you will take it as they have the second-best record in franchise history at the All-Star break, only to the 1986 Mets. And, oh, by the way, we've got a trade deadline coming up in a couple of weeks, and there's a name out there that both the Yankees and Mets are going to be looking at that could change the trajectory of their franchise for decades to come. Juan Soto, make for fun of fence. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Good morning, G. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed the, the Mets didn't sweep. I wanted them to sweep, but I did say last week, at least get three out of four. Yeah. It turns out that the uh, the Braves lose to the Nationals, and everybody's off to the All-Star break. Everybody's got a few days off here. They're not going out to L.A., but... Um, All right, the Juan Soto thing. We we might as well get this thing out of the way right now. So he has two and a half years left on his contract. That's one of the reasons why Washington has tried over the last two years to to, to give him these huge contracts, and the latest one being 15 years, $440 million. Yeah, was it 15 or 14? I I think it was 15 or 14. I think it was 15. But anyway, um, but the point being is that it uh, it is an enormous contract. Everybody's like, I can't believe he's turning down almost a half a billion dollars. And it is kind of really like, wow. I mean, it it just blows you away. Well, the average annual value, though, because the years are so long. Well, he's trying to buy. They're trying to buy out two years of arbitration. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it's not all that impressive. There's there's a bunch of guys in Major League Baseball that are getting more per year than what this offer was for Juan Soto. But of course, four hundred and forty million dollars guaranteed is what everybody sees. But Juan Soto clearly doesn't want to play there. And you hear two and a half more years of control, but this team is in a full rebuild. Yep. And you could get more with those years of control from a potential team that is paying or uh, trading for him uh, because you're getting those years back from him. So th- they may, they re- this thing after this uh, deal was declined really might accelerate well, into the trade deadline. Well, that, well the point is, is, is anybody, you know, can they put a package together quick enough to, you know, make the Nationals do this trade now or do they wait until the off season when everybody can relax, everybody can sit down, everybody can look at uh, uh, the potential uh, compensation going towards him? It's not going to be an easy trade. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think you know an easy trade. It's unlikely that it happens before the trade deadline. You know, I think this is going to happen in the off season. That's that's what I yeah. think. Um, and maybe maybe not maybe not until next trade deadline. Maybe who knows? But like I said, he still has you know the that this. The rest of this year and then two more years. And and so the Nationals did this last year with him. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying to do it this year with him. And now I think eventually I think now the Nationals realize that it's it's not gonna come to pass. It's just not gonna happen. He doesn't want to be there. And listening to Max Scherzer talking about his former teammate, you know, makes you say, Man, go get the guy if you can. And, you know, there's the Mets have plenty of prospects. Uh, the Mets picked up two more guys in the first round last night. And they can pay him. And they can pay him. He's that's, one of the few franchises that can pay him. Well, yeah, so that that's going to be the big thing. Like, you know, I guess I guess the Rangers and the Angels were always out there in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would think that the Giants are going to be in this mix. The Dodgers are going to be in the mix. The Cubs would be in the mix. And I, I don't know, are the Yankees in the mix? And well, is Yankees Aaron Judge going to be here or not? I mean, so really that's the question. So there's two guys that the future with their respective teams really play into this Juan Soto situation. Now, I do believe that Steve Cohen will blow through luxury taxes and not care all that much. Um, But there are thresholds. And sometimes when you get to those highest thresholds, it does become prohibitive even for a guy like Steve Cohen. And in that instance, you're like basically funding these other teams with the revenue sharing and and the luxury tax. But, you know, Jacob DeGrom. Does he come back? Does he look like the Cy Young Award winner that we've seen in the past? 
He opts out, and then he's going to be looking for a gigantic extension. Aaron Judge with the Yankees. Is he going to get paid by the Yankees? So those two situations really play into whether or not the Mets and Yankees are going to go forward and bring in a guy like Soto that you know is going to get close to $500 million. And you can see that the Washington Nationals also have other problems. They'd love to get rid of Patrick Corbin's numbers. Yeah. You know, Steven Strasburg hasn't pitched for them and it seems like forever. And, you know, and they're still paying Max Scherzer. They lose all these guys. I mean, they offer them big contracts, but not big enough. Like, and I, I don't know if it's just because of the money or it's just a place the guys don't want to play, but Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, Anthony Rendon, Juan Soto, it's happening again to them. Well, it just goes to show you how good a team they had and, you know, yeah. how many good well, they players won a World they Series. had. Yeah. yeah, and how many good players they had. So, it, ine- inevitably, it happens to all these teams. The team seems like there's like this five-year run where they're in the, the mix, they're in the mix, they're in the mix, they're in the mix, they finally win the championship, and then they start discarding players. Mm-hmm. You know, all these players could be still on the Washington Nationals if you still wanted them there. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it comes to point. It comes to a point where like, the Yankees are at that point. All right, how, who are we paying and, and how, how much are we paying them and how long are we going to keep them here? Yeah, I mean, it also begs the question, you know, who would you rather have for the next 10 years? Would you rather have the, you know, 23-year-old uh, Juan Soto or the – 31-year-old next year, Aaron Judge. There's no question you'd want to have the 22 or 23-year-old Juan Soto. There's no question. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely no question. So, I mean, maybe. I mean, but, but the point being. How awkward would that be if the Yankees traded for Soto, which basically meant that they weren't going to re-sign Aaron Judge at the end of the year? But it's a game It's a game that everybody has to play. Yeah. So, the you know, Aaron Judge is playing the game. You know, he's having a great year. He bet on himself. Um, I, I still think that they want Aaron Judge. They want to keep Aaron Judge in the Yankee uniform. Uh, they may sniff around Juan Soto to keep their fans happy. Mm-hmm. I just don't see them at keeping both of those players. Yeah, and when you trade for him, even though he's got two and a half more years of control, you know, Scott Boris is his agent, I believe. I'm almost positive of that. I mean, he's going to want that new deal right away. I mean, they're, they're not going to sit there and take those two more years on the rookie deal or whatever it is and go to arbitration, even though that number is okay. They're going to want that contract right away. Right, and I, I don't know if a new team is going to offer him a 15-year contract, but I could see a 10-year contract. Yeah, but with more money per Yes, year. of course. Yeah, you could see 10 years, $400 million. Yeah, I mean, that, which that's would, what you could see, which would be 11 million more per year than what he was offered by the Nationals. Right. So somewhere around there. I know these are crazy numbers. It's other people's money. I don't really care. But I think that's probably what Boris is looking for. Some major upgrade in terms of average per year. You know, that's the thing that, uh, you know, the Yankees are nuancing with Aaron Judge. Well, this is the highest paid per year, everyday player we've ever had. You know, that's, you know, yeah. there's, there's all these different angles to it. And they can feel good about their their offer when, in, in essence, for Aaron Judge right now, this is going to be his one shot at this whole thing. He's not he's not young enough to have another shot. So if Juan Soto signs a ten year deal with wherever he goes, yeah, you could have, have another, another shot. shot. He'll yeah. have another shot, right? But uh, you know, then do you? want to put yourself in that situation or do you want to get as many years as possible because I, I think, now's the time to cash I, I, in I, again i think you know you got to be you, you got you got to be realistic about what you're paying and how long you're paying somebody mm-hmm. that's all yeah and i'm sure that um to me to me i would be reticent to give anybody a 10-year deal all guaranteed money well yeah i mean look at what's going on with mike trout even the best player in baseball has missed how many games yeah, I mean, you know, at the last beginning of this has been crazy. Right, yeah. exactly. So this can happen to all these players. Uh, I, I, I would think that he is definitely going to be. He's going to be twenty four in October. So I'm, I mean, even I'm, if you gave him a ten year deal this year, right, it'd be thirty four by the end of it, not thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, like we've seen some of those I'm deals. I'm going to give it seventy five, twenty five, that he's a Met. Really? Yeah. That confident? I am because I think the Mets have the assets and they have the owner. The assets in the owner, man. Yeah, you know when and that, and that, and that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, of course. I mean, and uh, obvi- now you think this would be more of an off season situation than a trade deadline situation? Yeah, I mean they have a couple guys that that are trade deadline. When you say trade deadline eligible guys that are in the last year, like a Josh Bell who's in the last year of his contract, and I don't think the Nationals would have a problem, you know, helping the Mets in that regard. But you know, seeing Juan Soto in a Met uniform, you're gonna oh it's gonna God. take it's gonna take. 
whatever it would take to get Kevin Durant out of the Nets. Yeah, I mean, well, even more so in, if you think about it, because we're talking about a 23 year old superstar. I mean, that's it's a totally different situation. You don't you don't see a lot of this. See, this is this, I'm all in on this one. This oh, is like, well, of this course, like Donovan yeah. Mitchell at 25. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what this is. Now you've seen a couple guys hit free agency like Harper and Machado at 25, and that would be the same for Soto, but, I mean, those guys weren't really available in trades prior to those free agency years where they were free to sign with anybody, and now Soto is. I mean, it's not like he's a 300 hitter. Well, not this year he's not, but he's he's really turned. I mean, it's not all about the batting average. And, and, and by the way, he's probably you know the lone guy in that in that lineup. Well, you know, yeah, he's like, on a horrendous team. I, I kind of feel like uh, watching the Cubs and the Mets the last three games. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like <laughs> did somebody freaking get a hit somewhere yeah. along the line. I no, mean, I know. I, well, the Mets. I, are... I forgot. How, I didn't realize how inept. The Cubs were. They're oh terrible. Absolutely terrible. I mean, and I guess you know they kept talking about the wind blowing in at Wrigley Field and everything. Yeah, like, but you gotta be kidding. Mets need another bat desperately. Oh, absolutely, I, they need one. I mean, it's maybe, you know, but maybe the Nationals because I always feel like you get more at the trade deadline because they're teams that are like, we gotta go for it right now. Now is the moment. Maybe the Nationals capitalize on that and essentially fleece a team. But I don't think you can fleece a team when it's Juan Soto is what you're getting back. But you know, get more at the trade deadline. I mean, maybe. You never know. It's a new world with Steve Cohen. Steve Cohen could be hearing all this stuff and seeing all this stuff and being like, this doesn't happen in baseball. This doesn't happen in sports where a guy like this becomes available right now. Go and get him. Do it. And I'll do whatever I need to do on my end. Just figure it out, baseball people. And I'll pay him. If I need to, right away, you know, in this next offseason, I'll certainly do it. Well, could you imagine if you had him... Out in the in the Mets outfield, I mean, it would be it would be insanity. It would it, be it would it would be it would be great. And, it you, would and be, you'd have him, Alonzo. You know, hopefully Lindor is better than what we've seen. But you've got those three guys as a core of your team in that lineup. And then you got Scherzer for another two years after this year. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see what that, happens with the Grom. Right. And then what know. what happens with the Grom? That's yeah. that is a huge question. That hopefully will be answered here by the time the uh, Padres come to town. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he is right there. There's really no, I mean, I'm still sticking to my, I need to see five starts from him with him not coming out of a game to start feel confident about him being able to finish the season and go into the postseason because it's just been so up and down. It hasn't just been this year. It was all last year. And that and that is going to be, that is going to be a huge, huge decision. By him and by the Mets, if he comes back and is dominant as we hope that he is, yeah, then he opts out. He's yeah, it's going to be I mean, crazy. Th- then what? Well, he's going to get a lot of money. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So that would mean that would mean you would have the highest per average uh, paid player in Scherzer at forty three million a year. Mm-hmm. You have Lindor at what thirty four million a year? I think it is yeah. right thirty three somewhere around there. Then you're going to have. Jacob DeGrom, who's going to want to have probably five years, $250 million or something, some crazy number. And then you're trading for Soto, too. And you're trading for Soto. I mean, it really it, it becomes the Dodgers. Yeah, well, it does. I mean, even more so, I think. Because think about it. I mean, right now the Mets, I believe, have the highest payroll in baseball. Now you add an opted-out Jacob DeGrom with a new contract and potentially Juan Soto, if they sign both those guys, I mean, you would that would be stratosphere stuff that – even the Dodgers haven't reached. I mean, it would, you'd feel like you'd have an all-star team. Well, the, Do- the Dodgers right now. Oh, they have more payroll? Yeah, they're at 260, uh, 261, and the Mets are at 259. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's actually, the, the fact that we're even talking about the Mets. In this way? <laughs> in yeah. this way. It's such a short period of time is ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I mean, And by the way, it's reflective of what's going on on the field as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I- don't forget what they're paying Buck Showalter. Yeah, and, and of course, he's been a huge influence on this group. I mean, you know, I knew that this was a good first half, but to to know it was the best record uh, only to the 86 Mets at, yeah. the, at the All-Star break for a Mets team. I mean, they've had some good teams in the past, but this team is the second best in their history. Was like that, that, that was impressive. So, according to Spot Track, the Mets are paying $259 million for their uh, salary for their team, and the uh, New York Yankees are paying two hundred fifty million. Okay, so they're right there with the third, third right. highest. And then you get the Phillies, the Padres, and the Red Sox and the White Sox. You know, 
the Padres are a really interesting team because they are a really good team, but they, they for some reason they can't seem to get it. Well, they're also in a, a division. I mean, last year the Giants had that crazy regular season, and the Dodgers are really good, of course. But you remember, we were we were always talking about you know their 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 payroll. Yeah. All right. Machado is at thirty two. Eric Hosmer Hosmer is at twenty one. Darvish at nineteen. Blake Snell at thirteen. And of course, they got guys on the injured list. Will Myers at twenty two. Well, they gave Tatis the money too. Right, they gave Tatis a big big deal. I've got to find him. He's right there. I see him. He's there he is right there. But, you know, they, his contract doesn't kick in just yet. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, that's a team that they they, ex- they expect wins now. They definitely do. They've, they've invested in them. You know, they're in a very difficult division. They're trying to keep up. They've done a decent job. Remember that deal before the season where they were trying to unload Hosmer on the Mets and, yes. and Paddock and that whole deal. Right, right. It, it so seems, seems way, like a good thing that they didn't do Right. That. Well, by the way, Fred, uh, Fernando Tati signed a 14-year, $340 million contract. Yeah, so he took that money that, that Juan Soto is saying he, no thank you to. He did. So, But you're also playing in San Diego a little bit different than playing in, down in D.C. at that horrendous ballpark. But you think about this. He's making uh, 5.7 this year, $7 million next year, $11 million, and then it kicks into twenty. Twenty million, and at the end of it, it's like thirty-six million. That's a bargain. Yeah, C- considering what Juan Soto is going to want, and what most likely Jacob Degrom is going to want. And there's only a few teams out there that can pull it off. There really is only a handful of teams that can pay a guy like Juan Soto that type of money. And the Mets are now back to be one of those teams. 